Hi guys, here in the vibrant city of Istanbul, Turkey. Here for a little while, I'm gonna show you where to go, what to do, what to see. Let's start by talking about the geography of Istanbul. This is an enormous city. It stretches out about 50 miles from the far eastern side to the far western side. As a visitor to the city, you're gonna spend the vast majority of your time at the historical sites and the main shops and restaurants in town, which are located in the heart of the city, only a couple of miles from each other. And they're right along the Bosphorus, which is a famous waterway that is the divider between Asia and Europe. There's a good chance your hotel will be located near this place. This is Taksim Square, which is a large plaza that is always crowded with people day or night. Remember, there's 15 million people that live in this city. A lot of people coming and going. You'll find that there's markets nearby, restaurants all over this part of town. Some open air markets like this place that sells books. This street is called Istiklal Avenue, where you can catch a trolley and do some of your best shopping. It comes right off of Taksim Square, and it goes on for about a mile. You'll find all sorts of high-end retailers, all sorts of cafes, uh, restaurants, and various different vendors and places to shop. It's busy, extremely busy, day and night. You'll find buskers playing instruments or singing right along the street as well. And also be careful because there are occasionally scam artists that will approach tourists. And so keep your eye out for those. In fact, I'm going to do another video specifically talking about scam artists in Turkey. Now, if you walk down Istiklal for about a mile, you'll end up at Galata Tower. This is one of the most famous attractions in all of Istanbul. The tower was built in the 1300s and they light it up at night. It looks beautiful. In the daytime, it's the best place to catch a view of the entire city. Now, whether it's day or night, from the Galata Tower, you just have a couple more blocks until you're at the waterfront of what they call the Golden Horn. And you can cross this bridge. It's called the Galata Bridge. There's always fishermen upon it but it's an easy walk to the other side where you'll be very close to some of the main attractions in Istanbul, including the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia. Now, immediately on the other side of the Galata Bridge, you will come to the Egyptian Bazaar, which is in a neat looking historical building. You walk in here, and you'll find a lot of Turkish goods. It caters to tourists, but this is a high-end place. The first thing that'll hit you is the smell. There's a lot of spices. It's a good smell, and you find Turkish delight in here and a variety of other Turkish goods. I'm amazed with Istanbul and the labyrinth of different streets there are that are just designated for shopping, different bazaars, different street vendors, lots of shops all over. Now they're always full of people. You might be asking where are the people from? A lot of them are tourists from Central Europe, such as Germany, and a lot of them are just Turkish people. This next place is called the Topkapi Palace. It's about a 10 minute walk from the Egyptian Bazaar just up the hill. And this is a unique place with a lot of pavilions, some unique rooms to see, uh, some different courtyards. It served as the residence for the Sultans of the Ottoman Empire built in the 1400s and in use all the way until the early 1900s. I like this place, but it didn't exactly blow me away. It's something you can see in about half hour or 45 minutes. And really the big prize is just next door. Next up is the granddaddy of all attractions, not just in Istanbul, but all of Turkey. 
the Hagia Sophia. It's on virtually everyone's list of 100 things to see before you die. And as you walk in, you kind of see why this is such an important and special place. Built in the 5th century, it served as an Orthodox church, then it served as a Catholic church, and it went back and forth. And then it served as a mosque for a few hundred years before it was finally uh, turned into a museum about 80 years ago. And you'll admire this place. You'll probably spend more time in line than you actually will inside. But walk around for a half hour, marvel at the artwork and the artistry, check it off your bucket list. Just right next door to the Hagia Sophia is the Blue Mosque. But you want to be aware in the plaza between the two, there's a lot of people and you'll likely get approached by either a tout or even potentially a scam artist. So you just got to be careful. But then you get in line for the Blue Mosque and you're going to have to take off your shoes. And so be prepared to wait in line, take off your shoes as you head inside the Blue Mosque. Another thing to consider is all females are required to wear a headscarf in the Blue Mosque. Now they have some that you can borrow, so you don't need to bring your own, but just keep that in mind. And as you come inside, remember this is a place of prayer and of worship, and you'll see Muslims praying. This is considered one of the top five mosques in the Muslim world. But take a look at the blue tiles on the ceiling, and that's where the mosque gets its unofficial name. Now you've been at the Top Gapi Palace, Hagia Sophia, and the Blue Mosque, just go right across the street to the Basilica Cistern. You may wait in line a little bit here too, but it's absolutely worth it. You go down and you can kind of smell this musk as you're going down into this area and then it opens wide up and you have these columns and a really unique environment almost feels like something out of a Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. It's hard to believe it's real, but this place has been around since the sixth century. I've been here a couple times on a couple of different trips to Istanbul, and I'd say this place kind of beat my expectations both times. I forgot how cool it is. It's like something out of Indiana Jones, and so I highly recommend this place. Go to the very back to see the Medusa columns, which there's some mystery surrounding how these got here, but you'll definitely want to check them out before leaving. So if you've never had a Turkish bath, or as they call it, a hammam, there are a number of places around this part of town where you can get one. I would not recommend going to a place that caters to tourists because they can charge two or three hundred US dollars where you really shouldn't spend more than about 30 or 40 at the most. And what happens is they separate the men and the women and you'll go back, you'll lie on this stone and they'll give you kind of a bubble bath scrub, following which they'll give you a massage. Now, word of warning, sometimes the massage can feel a little more like you're the chiropractor. It can be a little bit rough. The guy you see here, he gave me my first Turkish massage a few years ago, and it was almost a painful experience, so you may want to ask to go a little bit light. But it is an experience I'd recommend having while you're here in Istanbul. Next up is the Grand Bazaar. This is a famous place on a lot of people's lists. It is one of the top things to see in Istanbul. You come in here and it's a little bit like the Egyptian market, except instead of focusing on spices and high-end gifts, it has everything from clothing and jewelry to desserts and food. It has spices and even counterfeit items in here. Some good deals to be had. This is supposedly the oldest and largest indoor shopping plaza anywhere in the world. Now, word of warning, 
you're going to get lost in here. It's a maze. And after about 10 minutes in this place, everything starts to look the same. This next place is called the Valens Aqueduct. Originally built in the 4th century by the Romans, and it's been kept up over the years through the Byzantine Empire and later the Ottoman Empire. About a 20-minute walk from the Grand Bazaar. It's a cool place to take some pictures and just kind of relax. Of course, if you're not in the mood to walk here, you can always drive here. The highway goes literally right underneath the aqueduct. So far in this video, you've seen about a dozen places, all of which have been walking on foot. You can literally start at Taxim Square, walk down to the Galata Tower across the bridge, and see all the sites from the Grand Bazaar to the Hagia Sophia. And you can do it all in one day if you want to. But now it's time to get in a car, get in a taxi, to one more place that I have in mind. Well, on the way to my final destination, I had to stop at the Saudi Embassy. This place has been in the news a lot over the last year or so because a journalist was murdered here. And there's nothing to do or see here. I don't recommend it, but it's just I have a pension for seeing these type of places that are always on the news. So, The last place on my list is called the Rumeli Hasari. This is about a 30-minute drive from central Istanbul, but it's a must-see on my list. It's a fortress that was built in the 1450s and was in use by the Ottoman Empire for hundreds of years. This is a great place to come and get some photos. There's really a unique vibe here. It's kind of almost like a mix between a medieval castle and the Great Wall of China. And all along this place, you get a great view of the Bosphorus. I recommend walking down along the promenade. There's vendors, a lot of people walking around. You see a lot of ships passing by and there's even some great restaurants in the neighborhood. So take some time, walk along here and enjoy the view. And there you have it, my overview of Istanbul. Call it Istanbul for dummies if you'd like. And listen, this is a great place to visit. One thing I didn't address is the food. There is so much good food here, and I'm gonna make another video that discusses some of the food you can try while in this amazing city. I always like to strike up conversations with locals, and I had an opportunity to talk to this Turkish guy about what he liked best, what was the best thing about Turkey. Here's what he said. Always best. Yeah. Istanbul is best. Antalya is best. Bodrum is best, Marmaris is best. What's the best thing about it? Is it the food, the people? People is always, Turkish always best is thinking about it. Yes. Uh, always is nice people, risking, respecting the, in, from all tourists. Okay. And government also, it's okay. Haybar okay. is very well. Okay. It's best from, in, uh, big man from all Muslim people. Okay. And then food also good, clothes also good. Yes. And, What's the best food? Tell me the best food. Best food. You don't know. It's a choice from customer. You don't know. Yeah, well, Somebody I, I like know, kebab. Tur Turkish delights, yeah. you know, that's yeah, very delight, good. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Turkish kebab is very well. Yeah. Turkish donut is very well. You know, somebody is from church. Okay, and okay. You like, for example, kebab. Somebody like from the house food. You understand? Yeah.